It is time for our Friday's K- Korea On Demand. And today we're going to be going into K Travels. And of course, joining us in the program for all things traveling is Ethan Moon. Ethan, good to see you once again. Hi, it's good to see you again. Ethan, yes. I don't know how I feel about today's topic. <laughs> Two dudes sitting in this studio talking about dating in the winter. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm married. Uh huh. My wife is very much pregnant, which means there's very little <laughs> dating going on. Uh, we're going to talk about dating why. In the winter, uh, is, is winter the perfect time for dating according to our, our travel expert here? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know how how I felt about uh, doing this piece because I almost felt like I'm a dating coach right now. (laughs) (laughs) But I I can only speak from experience. And yes, I honestly, I can say that you have the most success in Mm -hmm. winter. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, in my younger days, it's Uh sure, like it's like around Christmas time. But although, you know, Christmas is uh, long past, you have, uh, what is it, Valentine's Day coming up. You have... uh, white day coming up and things like that and so Uh people couples are getting ready Uh, but also because just timing wise you think that winter is just good because both this is when like sort of the the older and both the older and younger koreans are pretty much free around this time Uh, that's my theory okay i mean i've discussed this with many of my friends and yeah it's just you just get a lot of tender matches around this time Mm -hmm. and i think maybe it's because um, you know, Koreans are really busy. They're always working, right? So um, the one time that they actually sort of have time, I think, is around the winter. I mean, mm. of course, the younger kids, uh, it's it's the holidays, the vacation from school, so right. they're off. And then the even the older folks, because, you know, they have to take all those vacation day, days that they weren't able to. Um, sort of everything is wrapping up, so there's not as much work. So this is when they're sort of off. And unlike the other holidays, the big ones like Seoul or Chuseok, mm-hmm. it's not a holiday that it's, it's like necessarily you have to spend with your family, which is, you know, something that isn't second nature yeah. to maybe a foreigner because, you know, Christmas is the time, like Thanksgiving, you know, in the States. That's when we're supposed to be with the family. But Koreans, it's just sort of like... A, like a holiday to just chill. Yeah, and mm. let's face it, winter time is pretty depressing. It mm. gets dark very easy, uh, very quickly. And I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he's mm. uh, he's uh, he's my age. I've known him for years now, and uh, he's one of the few that's not married right now. And he said, mm. "Man, the winter feels so long and cold," and uh, which is probably why there's a lot of people seeking. The reason why we talk about this, ladies and gentlemen, mm. is not because we're actually giving you guys dating. Uh, tips, but Korea as a dating destination mm. and uh, our <laughs> dating slash travel expert, Ethan Moon, who, by the way, are you single? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am single. And, you know, I, I, I empathize with all the single folks out there. That's why you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're an expert. You're going to talk about some of the great places. No, I'm not an expert. That's why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a travel expert, and that's what happens, right? If, so, so yeah. If you have somebody, great places to go on date here in uh, Seoul and uh, you know any areas out there. So what do you yeah. think? What, what's a great place to visit uh, if you're going to take someone out on a date? Well, I mean... I think the first thing you have to do is you have to find your date. You yeah. know, before we get to the dating <laughs> spots, it, it's sort of pointless to go to these like dating spots because, like, I can tell you firsthand as a single guy, if you're gonna go to these uh, romantic places, it's, it's not good to go as a single. So I think, um, you know, I don't know where you found your date, but I think it's it's pretty much the basics are still the same. You know, just go to a very foreigner friendly place. Um, like Gangnam or Hongdae or Itaewon. Yeah. I mean, not only is it very lovely with all the illuminations out there and a lot of activity happening, um, I think that's possibly your best bet to... You yeah, know. you know what I realized? Like, mm. Although I, this is not where I met my wife. I met my wife through a mutual friend. Mm. Uh, but I noticed that when I used to go in my 20s to Itaewon, mm. Itaewon was a very good place for especially like us kyopos mm. because there was a lot of people like Korean Koreans who were open to the Western culture mm. and they were Korean. Mm. And so they kind of understood the kyopo mentality a lot more and they were mm. more open to meeting kyopo because not a lot mm. of people like meeting kyopos. Let's put, put it this way, right? Yeah. And so I thought Itaewon being more open to 
I guess, other cultures and things like that. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's easier for you to meet somebody in Itaewon. I don't know how things are these days. I haven't been to Itaewon in, in ages. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it's it's hard being a kyopo. That's why I'm single. You know, <laughs> we're not we're not special anymore. Uh, you you have to be a foreigner, you know. Um, but uh, Itaewon, I think, it's sort of turned into like this Western theme place. Yeah. That younger Koreans go. Yeah. So it's not necessarily as much of you know the Itaewon. It's not the Itaewon that we're we're used to. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's not actually Hongdae is I think far more friendlier to foreigners because yeah. now most of the foreigners are not like military or anything like that. You know, before there was the Yongsan base over there. Yeah. But they're like students or like a lot of them are part time models or entertainers and such. So they hang around that Hongdae area and. Um, uh, the other place that I actually think is quite good to go to is Gangnam as well. It's, it's actually... Still? Yeah. I, I mean, but I would recommend Apgujang because the, the regular Gangnam area, I think the hype has sort of died down a long time ago. You know what yeah. I heard is Apgujang area, you know, the Rodeo mm. Street. Yeah. It was dying mm. and then it's coming back alive again. I don't, I don't know about it dying, but yeah, I mean, I know that recently that just everyone is going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? No, no, it's been recent yeah. because, like you said, like, Gangnam is no longer, like, the place to go to, right? You know, the Gangnam Station. I think the last time it was anything was when it was Gangnam style, and then they had Sai up there with all the... But yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, everything is going to Apgujang, which is not far yeah. away, which yeah. is, it's not far yeah. away, but there's, like, a lot more places to eat and uh, more places to drink, more hip areas, right? But yeah. speaking of which, there's, like, recent areas that are kind of up and running up and coming with these quote unquote hip places right that uh, mm. people haven't didn't used to visit until recently yeah i think um songsu is probably the biggest one yeah um i don't even know if it's sort of niche anymore it's 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 where a lot of people go because you got the college areas around there like Honda, etc and um i there's also mulle as well as um oh why can't i i'm just and uh, where is it? Yeah, Mule is, Hapjong is also a hip place. Mule, and I, oh, there's one that I just can't really think of right now. I don't know why. But anyways. But yeah, yeah, Hapjong's also happening. And oh, Ulchiro. Uh. <laughs> Uchiro has always sort of been a hip sort of place. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uchiro is an interesting place because yeah. it has that that retro aspect, right? It's not yeah. supposed to be for the young people. It was where yeah. the older people used to go, and yeah. then the young people took over and made yep. it into a hip place. Yep. Ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> ruined it, man. It ruined it. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been here as long as you. Uh, my but, producer was just saying that yeah. Apgujong was like the, the peak of Apgujong was towards the tail end of the 80s to mid 90s. 80s to 90s. Which I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know either. Too young. <laughs> but I remember when I was uh, hanging out in like the mid 2000s, it was mm-hmm. like it was pretty popping and then it died down. And I heard it's, I guess it's like a different kind of uh, Apgujong back then. Yeah, um, maybe. But, but, anyways, like, there's. A lot there's certain things that haven't changed. You know, we talk about like new places that are popping up and things like that, but bars. Hmm. Anywhere you go, you're always going to find bars. But uh I mean what where is there any kind of bars that you would recommend for a person new to uh Korea? Like uh, is there a certain area or a certain type? I mean, we just sort of went over all the general areas where you can find bars mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. enjoy your night, but um I, I can't really recommend any single place because it seems like every time I go to a place, yeah. the place I like closed down or changed ownership and then there's an even better place or something. Yeah. You know, so things just keep changing. It's unlike the States. In the States, when I go to like downtown Fullerton or something, it's the same bar for the, the 10, 15 years yeah. ongoing. Here, they're constantly changing. But there's one somewhat staple place that I think you really can't go too wrong with that I personally avoid because <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong but I avoid it. <laughs> I, I mean do you know this place it's called Thursday Party I have no idea you really I'm, I, you know, I don't really go to those places I don't oh, really okay. go to bars yeah, yeah, yeah okay I mean it's been around for as long as I've you know been in Korea which is like since 2013 I've traveled here and it was still there back then um and it's probably the most foreigner friendly somewhat kind of bar it's I'll everywhere t- i'll tell you what you know the last time i went to a, pu- a pub oh yeah is when soul pub was still around do you remember soul pub in itaewon it was like the <laughs> it's like the only place that's open at like 3 4 in the morning and it's the lights are so bright and it's it's again it's itaewon so it's very foreigner friendly and things like that but really? there's a mix of both koreans 
you you haven't been around Itaewon after after twelve. <laughs> no, I, I I have, but like nowadays it's open until like eight. I I mean it's just always open. Oh really? Yeah. I, well, how long you you really haven't been going out? For I haven't a while. been going out. Dude, I've been <laughs> I've been married for like seven years now, and uh, you know there's not a whole lot of partying that goes on anymore. <laughs> and I like to stay within the house nowadays. But yeah. But for here's the thing, though, yeah. right? Because. One of, so one of the things that we're trying to do is uh. recommend places for our overseas listeners mm. to go to, right? Mm. You wouldn't recommend to go them to like a Western bar. I mean, you're you're pretty much experiencing what you experienced back home and things like that. If you were to pick mm. out something that's very like Korea specific, mm. right? Like for mm. example, you know, there's like the bowling bars and things like that, which I don't. I don't recommend people drinking and bowling at the same time. Okay, all right. The reason I say I personally don't go, yeah. but I would recommend, is because the theme of this is romantic. romantic oh, it's group. romantic over there. It, no, you have to find your opa. And, and the biggest <laughs> issue is the language barrier. Okay. Right? I speak Korean. Yes. So if I go to a Thursday party or something, I mean, it's like a place that caters to foreigners, but not only do the bar cater to foreigners but you have a lot of Koreans that are in boys and girls yes opas and you know yes the nunas that are interested in foreigners or speak foreign languages or want to like yeah. I was saying they're yeah. open to the Western yeah. culture and yeah, foreign languages absolutely. okay okay so um, you know that's a big issue I yeah. mean if you speak fluent Korean then I recommend you just go to where all the Koreans are. Yeah. And it's not hard to find. I mean, these places are happening. You just go to that place. But um, I think Thursday Party is a good place to start because it's literally everywhere. I mean, I went to uh, Seomyeon once in Busan. Oh, my goodness. But Seomyeon is like a, a very young place, no? Uh, yeah, but there's, you know, I don't know. I went once and I, I, I it's how I feel like when I go to Hongdae, right? Hongdae was a Hongdae great place. Worst. Hong, like Hongdae was one of those places when you're in your 20s, you yeah. feel like you're home. Yeah. And then you enter your 30s and you go, I can't, I can't. They're, they're, they're too young. They're sucking, they're sucking all the energy out of me. Li- uh, they literally don't even let you in anymore. <laughs> they'll, they'll card you and they say, you're too old, you can't go in. So I feel very rejected there. In you know? But yeah. Seomyeon is still open to all ages. Seomyeon is still open to... I mean, I feel old everywhere I go. Even <laughs> Gangnam. I mean, what are you talking about? We're, we're old now. Which is why I don't go partying anymore. <laughs> you know where I go to? I go to places where they play old K-pop music. <laughs> 80s and 90s K-pop music is what I do. Uh, but anyways, I think Thursday party, you have a, rel- a, a sort of an older crowd. Because yeah. it's, it's just sort of where all the foreigners go. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah. Ethan, we've covered sort of hmm. like... The, the party scenes, mm. the bar scenes and things like yeah. that. But so let's once say, you find your opa. Yeah, yeah, once you find your opa and your, you know, your mm. significant other. Mm. But let's say you're not into the whole drinking culture and things like that, mm. right? Like, what are some of the more romantic activities that you can do in the wintertime here in Seoul? Right. So let's just move away from this party. Once mm-hmm. you have your opa, or let's say you already have yeah, 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 someone you have your that you come with, okay. right? Um, I think Seoul is a great place for you know, sort of romance in the winter because you have all the illuminations going on. So right now, Seoul, like, city, as they're actually hosting, like, these uh, illumination festivals. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to Gwangamun by the palace where it's usually, um, you know, it's, it's nice to walk in Gwangamun area. But um, uh, I just went there the other day. Near, and, like, the Cheonggyecheon area? Yeah, yeah. Right from the, the palace, Cheonggyecheon, yeah. to uh, Cheonggyecheon. They have this whole, like, Christmas market thing going on there. Yeah. It's, it was so packed on Christmas when mm-hmm. I went. I, it, it, <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend you go actually on Christmas because there's too many people. But they're also projecting, like, uh, these big visual projection. It's hard to describe, but it, it's, like projections onto Gyeongbukgung, the, mm-hmm. the actual main door right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a lot of that going on. And then when you get to Cheonggyecheon, they have a lantern festival going on as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's Christmas with sort of a Korean touch. I like it. Yeah, and especially because, you know, mm-hmm. when there's lights, it's always romantic. Yeah. And, you know, you not only have that, but you have the city lights going on. Mm-hmm. And something about the vibrant aspect of the city just makes it that much more... Uh, I guess, beautiful. But, you know, again, I mean, we're 
towards the end of January right now, mm. and you know we've got the New Year's way past us. Uh, you know, Christmas all passed by us, and. You talked about the lights. I'm from New York, hmm. right? So I I know about like the Rockefeller Center and things like that. Hmm. Uh, I know about the the, the m- big Christmas tree that's uh, set up at the Rockefeller Center. Hmm. I know on the top we call it the top of the rock, hmm. uh, the Rockefeller Center, and then you have the skating things as well. Hmm. Although I would say that it's not on par to that. Hmm. We have something similar here in Seoul too. Yeah. So um, actually. I- I I can't really compare it to Rockefeller because I, I mean it's it's world famous, right? It, like, it is world famous, you know, and I, it's it's in the movies and such. <laughs> um, but I also can't personally compare because I haven't skated there. Oh, you haven't been to Rock? I haven't skated in Rockefeller Center. I I've, I've been there, but really, I didn't skate. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what you can actually do. In um, Seoul, by the city hall, yeah, is you can also skate there. Yeah, and I think Seoul sort of took this vibe from Rockefeller. This is this is what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, it absolutely. has that vibe. Yeah, but it it's huge because that little square in front of uh, city, city hall, hall is um is is absolutely huge. That's where you know during 2002 World Cup they were all cheering mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like hundreds and thousands of people. And they do this every year, and this particular year um, they're gonna have it running from December 22nd to February 11th, and um it, it's I like it because you you sort of have not only just the city hall in front of you, there's a hotel behind you, and it's just sort of a very, like, city vibe that you're skating in, yeah, and yeah. it's outdoors. Yeah. And I, I can't really think of another place that has this kind of vibe. Rockefeller Center. Other than Rockefeller Center, yeah. you know? Like, can you think of anything? No, I, I really can't. I mean, there's a lot of, like, skating rinks, per se, yeah. uh, in, in Korea. Yeah. But not the kind of scene, that, like, the scenes that you just described there. Yeah. Right? But I think the best part about that, well, this could be good and bad. Mm. Because the admissions to Rockefeller Center skating rink is super expensive, right? Yeah. He, I know in City Hall, it's very affordable. Yeah. So, um, yeah, at City Hall, it's only... So, a thousand one. Yeah, a thousand one. So with the exchange rate, that's like, less than a dollar. Yeah. And basically, they kept the admission the same since they ever opened. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I was just curious, so I checked out the admission for Rockefeller. And for an adult, it's 21 to $79. Jeez. And um, when I just, like, picked tomorrow, like, it was $50. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> It's it's all too much, right? <laughs> yeah. Although it, there's something special about it. You know how they say like when you go to uh. certain restaurants in Korea, like by the beaches, uh. the food doesn't really taste that good, but you're paying for the spot, yeah. right? So it's like with Rockefeller Center as well. With, but but in exchange though, in Korea, in mm. Seoul though, mm. you get that you get like sixty percent of what you get, right? At this no, restaurant. I mean I mean if you think about it. A dollar compared to fifty. Oh, that's a huge. That's huge. But there again, is no way Rockefeller Center is yeah. fifty times. To- I haven't been there. But, but I, can you vouch for me? It's not fifty times better. It's, it's it? not fifty times better. <laughs> it's not. But I say it's good and bad because uh, it's so affordable. Yeah. It's so packed. That's true. That's true. It is packed. Um, it, it, actually, it was more packed when I went to uh, ice rink. Yeah. I I thought that would be a good idea to not you know, be in a packed situation. But the ice rink was more packed. Um, and this, at least you have the novelty of doing it in front of City Hall, Yeah. you know? Um, and also, if you just time it right and you just go during the weekday and then you go right when they open. Uh, so they open from uh, 10 to 9.30 on weekdays. Okay. Uh, then you got a good chance that it's not going to be too packed, Yeah. you know? And worst case scenario, it's like, it's only a dollar. You know? I know that there are some people yeah. that like to go to the uh, the Lotte World for the ice rink, mm. right? A lot more expensive, by the way, and it's right. not as romantic. You don't get the nice view. Uh, although I, I'm saving this because <laughs> I know, I know, you, I know you're gonna do. I know you're gonna do that. I'm gonna go. You know, we won't talk about this. Yes, you know, we're yes. not gonna talk about it further. Yeah. But um, the thing is, mm. there's something about just the outdoor activities. Yeah, it, it I is, mean, it is. indoors and outdoors, it's right. it's very very different. So for our yeah. listeners out there, I know, mm. uh, you know, I, I think one of our listeners were saying that uh, they're they're in Korea, uh, January. But uh, if you still here, mm. uh, do check it out. It's great. 
Ethan, any other places you want to recommend uh, for people out there that want to have a romantic winter date uh, in, 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 city, in the city of Seoul? Actually, I wanted to just mention one more thing. Sure, sure, sure. Recently, just a few years ago, they, Seoul City opened up another ice rink in Nodal Island. And Which, oh yeah, yeah. So it's the same emissions, only a thousand. Okay. Um, it's in the middle of the Hunga. Yeah. So if you want more of a natural kind of vibe, where it's it's all nature, yeah. this island, and then you're looking out into like the city and the skyscrapers from the middle of the Hunga. Mm-hmm. I also recommend this place. You know, I'll tell you this yeah. right. Uh, both areas mm. during the winter time, mm. it's super cold. Yeah. Because, one, you're by the Han River, it's super cold. I think that place is even more cold. But also, the one by City Hall, oh. the reason why it's so cold is because yeah. there's so many tall buildings <sighs> that the wind, uh, there's the wind the wind chill effect. You know how like when there's a lot of tall buildings, yeah, there's like the a lot of funnel. wind? Yeah, oh yeah, my funnel. goodness, it's, it's pretty cold. So yeah. either way, you're going to have to face the cold, but come on, it's winter time, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, you got those two t- uh, two uh, areas to uh, kind of check out. Uh, anything else that you want to recommend for all of our listeners out there? You know, to be honest, this is all I'm going to sort of recommend as, oh, you should sort of do for okay, sure. Okay. Because everything else is, is nothing special. But if you're here with somebody that's special, just seeing the illuminations, I mean, just even going to the mall. Because, you know, the Shinsega department store in Myeongdong. Myeongdong it's just sort of magical out here. Yeah. Like Koreans really, I think, go out of their way to really illuminate everything and have this Christmas vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything is just romantic and you're just walking and, you know, if you're cold, you can just snuggle up to, you know, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything is just better when you're with someone. You know, and that is why, since I'm single, I'm, I'm going to be taken off to another country because <laughs> I can't stand the sadness. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things one of the things that Ethan told us when he first joined us in our interview he says listen I might not be around during the winter time go somewhere warm you're actually going to Hong Kong uh, not Hong Kong sorry Bangkok is where you're going yeah I'm going to Bangkok how long are you going to stay there for uh, two possibly three months okay well you know what one of the things that we can do is uh, keep in touch uh, through Zoom yes. obviously but yes. uh, these are some of the places that uh, Ethan has recommended but really I mean all about winter it's anywhere you go Hmm. It, you know, it's all what matters is uh, you're with someone that you care about right. and uh, someone that's special with you. Well, Ethan, I hope you find somebody real soon <laughs> yeah. so that you could actually g- go to some of these places yeah, next winter. Maybe I'll want to stay in, in or Korea stop going, stop going to Bang- Bangkok, find somebody during the winter time, <laughs> right? Anyways, safe travels, and uh, we'll see you again. All right, thank you, SJ. Thank you for having me. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application. Or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.